Hey, welcome to Five Lakes Garage, the home of random projects. We have lists, we have Jeeps, we have trucks, we have food. You name it, we got it. So help out the channel by just hitting that subscribe button. And if you like the video, go ahead and like it. And if you really like the video, like it and then tell a friend. But stay tuned, enjoy yourself. I'm gonna let you go because I got stuff to do. Welcome back to the channel and today we're actually going to do something that I have been waiting for for a really long time. I had to raise some money, I had to go get some parts, I had to get everything in line in order to be able to film this and actually get it done. Now let's see, here is my list of everything we want to get done. Not today, but eventually. I have it broken down between vehicles, I have trailers. So I got the Tacoma, I have shop stuff I want to do, I got the 2500 which is the uh, Dodge over there, it does have a fuel leak, I do need to get that pretty quick. Uh, we got van, uh, plans for the van, this is definitely long term, I haven't got anything for my wife yet to drive other than the van. Can't quite tear that apart unless I have something to drive. So that leaves two different projects that I can tackle right now. For the Wagoneer. I can finally rebuild that 727. Or for the CJ, ah, yes, they finally came in. And what this is is just, uh, yeah, it's a locker. It's an electronic lo uh, electric locker from um, Auburn's. And I got one for the front and one for the rear. These things were on back order forever. COVID strike, it, uh, they had supply issues. They had a bunch of different issues, but uh, I believe her name is Nancy. Uh, she's been in contact with me back and forth so many times that I wasn't getting irritated because it was on back order for so long because the communication was there. Thank you, Miss Nancy. Okay, so which one do we want to do today? We want to do lockers or do we want to do the transmission? Well, if I do lockers, that means I have to take the axles out. I don't have to take them out, but I'm going to take the axles off the CJ, which means it's going to be on jack stands. So that means I'm gonna have two vehicles on jack stands. So I'll tell you what, let's rebuild that transmission so we can get the Wagoneer out of the shop and at least in the driveway so I can have room to work on these axles. Yes, I'm gonna mark that off. Yeah. All right, so what all do we need to rebuild this fantastic 727 transmission for the Grand Wagoneer? Well, a couple different things you want you need to find out. One, is it a lockup or is it a non-lockup? And from what I've found so far, you can look at the output shaft of the transmission to find out whether or not it has lockup or not. All right, so if you look at the splines right here, these splines go all the way up. This is a non-lockup transmission. If it only came up here and then there was a small little stub, that would be a lockout transmission. The torque converter itself does matter a lockup will not fit on a non-lockup and vice versa. Uh, this is, I want to say this is a 24 tooth and the other one is a 23 tooth, so it still will not fit. So if you're not changing out the torque converter, then you should be fine. And what we're going to do today is actually just freshen it up. All right. So what do we have? We have new steels, we have new clutches, every gasket that you're going to need, a new filter. All right, so this particular kit does come with the brass uh, bushings that we're going to go into a lot of the pieces. So what else does the kit come with? Well, it comes with a band. This will be your front band. This is your rear band. This one right here is a lot it's a lot more stiff than the other one, but they do come with it. A lot of kits don't come with that. A lot of kits don't come with your brass stuff. I went ahead and picked up the brass just in case ours is jacked up. I can actually get them replaced. Now, the only thing that you might need 
that on most transmissions, I'm not sure on this one, but we're gonna find out together, would be this little tool. Okay, so this is designed to go right into your vise. So you put this into your uh, vise. Unfortunately, I broke mine. My new one's not supposed to come in until Tuesday. Maybe we'll do an unboxing on that. I don't know, we'll see. Anyway, and one other thing you wanna do is just go ahead and get you some sticky uh, Ultra Slick is pretty much what I picked up. This is just assembly lube. And the biggest reason why you want to do this is just to keep um, some of the mating surfaces from uh, having like a cold start or anything like that. And only that, there are some areas where you need something sticky in order to hold things together. Now, tools. So what we're gonna need, just about everything on this thing so far has been either a 7 16 a 9 16 maybe even a 5 8 but most of it is a 9 16 um, so we're going to need that. Uh, we're also going to need some picks. We also need some screwdrivers to be able to get some of the clips off and also some of the C clamp, uh, C clip pliers. All right. There's two different types of C clamp clamp pliers. You got these, these are my dad's old ones, which is awesome. Made in the USA. Anyway, you squeeze it and they open up. Then you also have these. When you squeeze it, they go together. So two different types you're gonna probably need both of them. So go ahead and grab it. All right, one of the things you might really wanna need would be a good size C-clamp. And what you really wanna use these for is when you get the valves out, you're gonna have to push it in enough in order to get the clip out. So you're gonna need those. And I'm sure there's gonna be some other things we're gonna need and we'll get those as we go. And probably a good idea, bring some gloves. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started with this guy here and just Disclaimer, this is only my first automatic transmission, but I did a lot of studying, so we should be okay. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and focus on it and start ripping things off. All right, so I was just taking the mount off, and as you can see, I think I might need a new mount. Yeah, it's all that torque from that 360 with that, was it a 8.31 to compression, whatever? Power! Anyway, uh, so first things you want to do is put it up on its end so that it will be stable. And these things are heavy. All right, so we're just going to pop all these off and get the cover off. Now, if you actually look really closely, I actually added a drain plug to this guy. And the reason why I did that is because if everybody's ever changed the fluid on one of these transmissions, you take all these off, leave a couple there, pull it down, boom, it gets everywhere. So I'll put a little drain plug, put a little seal on there. This is just a bolt that I had sitting over there, but I welded on a nut on the other side. So yeah, works great. And it doesn't make such a mess every time I take crap off. So anyway, let me get these off and then we'll keep going. All right, so we got the cover off. Uh, make sure your gasket area is nice and clean. There's some stuff in here that uh, could be the cause of my problem. I don't know what that is. <laughs> We're gonna leave that over there. I did find a couple of bugs in here as well. So I guess it's been sitting for a little while. Um, okay, so you have bolts all the way around here. This whole thing will come straight off. We're gonna leave this over to the side and we will deal with this section later. But first we're gonna get our um, steels and just basically tear it apart. We need to clean it. We need to actually get it to where it will start working. So a couple of uh, quick tips. If you have a bolt that comes out, try to put it in the same location or leave it to the side because uh, you don't want to get them mixed up. Sometimes they have a different thread. Sometimes they have a different length. We don't want to get those mixed up so we can actually get put it in correctly the first time. All right, real quick, couple things. Uh, in order to get this guy off, you take all your nuts and bolts off. You also have to take your uh, linkage off the side. It's just right up here on top. You should be able to pull that off without a problem. There is a little dinky winky uh, C-clip that don't lose that because you're gonna need it. Now, a couple things when you do pull this off, there is a shaft that comes all the way up here and you can we're getting ready to take that off up here. Now this goes back and forth. This is actually your shifter. Now be careful because this little ball bearing you need to keep. This actually goes in there. It's spring loaded. 
And actually, I may have should have taken that off before I did the other one, but hey, it's it's fine. We'll we'll work around it. But anyway, so keep an eye on that. Do not lose it. Uh, we want to get this guy off. We're gonna go ahead and pull the upper housing off. All right, so we took all the bolts off of the pump. All right, so we took all the bolts off the pump. And if you notice, there is a threaded rod there and a thread, uh, not a rod, but you know, a threaded hole there and there. That's actually for a slide hammer that you can actually pop this pump off. There is a seal that goes all the way around and you need to break that seal in order to do it. Now I did just go to Harbor Freight, pick up a little slide hammer, but that those threads do not match up with this there. So what I did was actually made one. I had a bolt, uh, that fit the size also had a nut that fit this so you weld them together and now you have a tool all right always take a look at your pump look at all the seals look at all the surfaces make sure they are okay this looks all right uh, actually the seal was just replaced not too long ago now it's always a good idea to have your workspace clear ish and put all your parts on another table all right so we got the pump out it's not looking too bad. I'm not seeing a bunch of shavings. I'm not seeing a bunch of clutch material. So I'm still not quite knowing what the heck is going on. Uh, my guess is one of these valves in here is maybe stuck and I'm not getting the pressure that I need because the main reason why this thing was not working is because I was not getting enough line pressure. So anyway, uh, pump is out. In order to get the rest out, we need to pull this guy off which it's kind of hard to see Hold on. all right so next step will be to remove the outer band now once i there's a nut and screw right here so there's a locker and then there's the actual screw itself so you're going to loosen that up that actually holds the tension onto the band itself now that's pretty pretty tight so when you put it back together it'll have to be the same way so let me loosen that up Take the band, and then I should be able to pull the first drum out. So there's your first drum. There's your clutch packs. There's your steels. We're going to be able to pull that apart here shortly and see what is wrong with it. Let's inspect. And actually, the band doesn't even look bad. I mean, there's some wear on it, no doubt. But actually, yeah, yeah, it doesn't look bad. Hmm. Interesting. All right, so just keep in mind, you do have a little speed washer here. Well, it's a little washer, so it's actually two. Keep that aside. You need to know which way that actually goes in. You know, it's amazing. You start taking parts off and it gets lighter. All right, so what we need to do now is actually get this whole shaft out. Uh, so we need to take the C-clip off. All right, so you need to get the pliers that I showed you earlier. These will actually spread out. Now, this is a kind of a heavy-duty piece, so make sure your pliers are up to the challenge. So you pull them apart, slide it off. See, there's your C-clamp. Now keep these in order. There are two. All right, so keep an eye on your C-clips. This one right, this one was first. You can tell it's thicker. This one's thinner and it is slightly a different size. So yeah, so keep that, keep it in order. Uh, the slot on the shaft is two different sizes, so you should not hopefully get that wrong All right, so in order to get the shaft out you need to take out these little pins here That's where your squeezers come through. All right, so there's a little tiny c-clip right there You just can take a little screwdriver and pull that up. Just do not lose it All right, so you have that out there. Now you can get your band out by loosening this little lock washer here or a lock nut. There you go. Loosen that up and then that should loosen up your main. So then, in theory, there we go. I believe that'll be a reverse band, which doesn't look bad. All right, so a couple of things that you really have to think about right now. Deep down inside here, you have springs and you have uh, bearings. Now those are gonna fall everywhere. As soon as you take the other side off, you pull that out, boom, it goes everywhere. So keep in mind of that, you do need to keep every one of these. Uh, if they're broken, get them replaced. 
I'm not sure if we have new ones in the kit, but I'll find out. But just know that that's going to fall everywhere. Just know that. So be careful with it. Now, as far as taking the other stuff off, now you can take these arms off if you like. Uh, if they are worn, then obviously take them off. Uh, they are simple, just a drive that out. It goes all the way through. And then there's one on this side is a, uh, a threaded rod. So just take that out and you can get these out. But I don't really see a problem with those. So once we get the bottom section out, we're gonna get these two valves out and then the whole case will be ready for cleaning. And then we can look at the drums. So that just slides right out. Inspect all of your rings. Uh, these rings here kind of look like something you'll find on a piston in your car. So I'm gonna get this guy off and then we should be able to pull those little bearings out. Sorry, you probably didn't see that earlier. Anyway, when I pull this out, all those bearings should come out with it. Yeah, they didn't fall out. All right, you ready? Now you should be able to see all those guys here. So when I pull this out, uh, and they all fall down. All right, so keep all these guys together. All right. So this little clip here is actually gonna hold in your uh, rear band, so keep that handy. All right, so the case is almost torn down. Uh, there's a few other little odds and ends we need to take off, one being these two valves. Let's pull all this stuff out of the way. Now the thing with these, these have got some heavy duty springs on them, that's where the C-clamp C comes in. We're gonna compress it and pull these little snap rings off. And I'm gonna show you that. There we go. All right, you wanna to try to get your clamp right there in the center where it is not bound with anything. So you don't wanna break it. All right, we're gonna give this a little bit of turn. All right, so I got it off. And as you can see, they have two little rungs here. You get your, you got a real skinny screwdriver. Pry one in and then you can work your way out. Now when you, this is under pressure, so keep that in mind when you're taking it off. See what this thing looks like. There you go, line her up, she comes right out. All right, got another seal. Looks like a one from a piston. That looks okay. There's your big honking spring. But if you look way down in there, you see there's another C-clip. And I might need to change my tongs, I can't get in there. Need some straights. All right, we'll get to that. Let's get this guy out first, and then I'll get to the other one. All right, same concept as before. The only thing is, is I need to find a washer big enough to fit across that right there. Let's see what we got. All right, looks like this washer is gonna do it. Just wanna make it sure that it is an even pressure all the way around so that we can get it out. All right. Now the good thing is this one isn't as hard as the other one. Slight pressure. Bring your skinny screwdriver in. There you go. Number two, out. Now let's ease this off very easy. Cause there is a spring in there. Wow, that is really easy to get off. It could be what my problem was, maybe. I mean, I don't know. It's still kind of decent, I guess. Huh, okay. All right, uh, I'm gonna go and change out my little prongs so we can get that guy out. And the case should be ready to go for cleaning. All right, so I just pulled the inner C-clip out. And let's see what she looks like. Well, the seal actually isn't too bad. She's still pretty, pretty soft. I'm still not seeing the culprit. Not fully anyway. All right, so the case is ready to be cleaned. I'm gonna pull this out of the way and then we're gonna to get to some of the drums and see if we can see what's in there. All right, so we do have one of the drums here. I'm going to inspect it. Got. All right, so there are your drum packs or your steels and clutches. Put it underneath. 
so I can pry it up. There you go. Once you get it started, you just work your way around. That comes out nicely. So now you have your clutch backs. Now let's see what they look like. All right. So you have your big heavy duty steel for the outside. That's a little warm. All right, clutch. Dude, there's a lot of material up here. Why was this thing not working? I mean, you can definitely tell the slippage. We're gonna rebuild it anyway, but still. All right, this actually looks okay. I don't think I wanna be pulling that off, but this is the bushing that I was telling you about earlier, uh, ones that you you can re, uh, replace. I'm gonna try to get those out, and if I can't, they're not getting replaced. All right, let's look at these clutches. See what they look like. You can move it around to where you can get a, a grip into it. Pull it up, start one side, pulls right out just like that. Now, now you can definitely tell where it got hot on this one. You got marks. First clutch. Holy, okay, maybe I found the problem. <laughs> Even though the clutch back looks fine, these steels do not, there, look at all the discoloration. Okay, so I mean, it did need an overhaul anyway. But yeah, these clutch packs got burnt. There's still so much material left on it. It's crazy. All right, I got everything lined up. Um, I was gonna, I'm gonna leave a, the part number to this actual tool, just so you do not buy it. This thing is a piece of crap. I've already had to modify it in order for it to work. There we go. Once you get it started, it should just come right out. There you go. Now we got it out. You can loosen up your tool. Now be careful this is spring loaded. And what you want to do is slowly bring this up. And there's going to be some springs underneath here. And what you want to do is keep note of where those springs live. Because when it goes back together, it needs to be the same. Uh, each one that I've seen on video and also books, they seem to be in different spots. So keep an eye on where yours is located. So there's a lot more springs than uh, in a lot of ones I've seen. Okay, well I got it on video, so I don't have to take a picture. But if you do, uh, if you don't have it on video, then go ahead and take a picture of it with your phone, camera, put it on a piece of cardboard, whatever. Take all your springs. Put them to the side. Now we can get this guy out. There we go. All right. So you have a ring right here. This is what you want to replace. I have one of those in the kit, so that's going to be replaced. You also have, so we can tilt it up, an inner ring. Actually, there's two of them. One right there and one right there. So we'll replace those, we'll take the bushing out, and replace that as well. Alright, let's get the rest of these uh, parts cleaned up, and be ready for assemble. So hopefully that gives you some sort of idea of what it takes to actually take one of, the, one of these things apart. Now this is a 727, it's a 3 speed, it's not that complex, uh, some of the other one 4L80s and that type of stuff. Even the 700 R4 over there, they have more drums, they have more clutches and that type of stuff. But this one here is relatively simple. Now, I'm going to go ahead and cut the video off here and I'm going to pick up on for part two on the reassemble because I have a lot of cleaning to do. Uh, every one of these pieces need to be cleaned. All right, so we'll see you in a little bit. Stay tuned for part two. Light up.